Hello, everyone. I need to. Um, this is chapter six in your um, in your uh, in your book. Chapter six is fairly an abstract chapter to um, to talk, and I hope you have an opportunity to read the chapter and uh, and uh, go through some of the stuff. It builds off from chapter six, off of chapter three, with it as well. And uh, this relates to your lab, if you're to your credit card lab with it. And I like to do a problem in chapter six, which is the carpet calculator. Um, this is what the carpet calculator uh, file looks like. And uh, let me walk you through uh, with some of the stuff. Uh, this is uh, in the new edition book, which is the uh, fifth edition book. This is on page 442 with it. If you could um, look at this and um, and and kind of walk you through this a little bit with you, I, I kind of picked number three because it kind of somewhat resembles some of what's called irrigation in your chapter with it. Now uh, I'm going to toggle back and forth with this as we go uh, along with this thing, so stay with me. Um, I'm going to walk you just read through the 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 Westfield Company Carpet Company has asked you to write an application that calculates the price with the carpet of a rectangular room. There's a similar problem that's discussed in Chapter 3 and Chapter 6 about the recta rectangle shapes with the same. To calculate the price, you must multiply the area of the floor width times the length by the price of uh, per square foot for the carpet. For example, the area of the floor is 12 feet long and the length is, is 10 with it, so both of those base and the width multiplied together, you get 120 feet. To cover the floor of the carpet with just eight dollars per square feet, so you take that eight dollars, you multiply it with the one twenty square feet, that will give you about nine hundred and sixty dollars. First, you need to um, create a class called room dimension that has two fields. One of them is the length of the room, and the other one is the width. The room dimension should have a method that is returning the area of the room, and the area of the room is the length multiplied by the room width. Next, you should create the room carpet that it has the room dimension uh, as the object of the field with this thing. All right. uh, you should also have a field that's also cost of the carpet per square feet, per square foot. The room carpet class should have a method that returns the total cost of the carpet. So on the next page down here, as you come along with this thing, you're going to see that there's a UML. This is the UML in your book that I kind of scanned that you could see there's a room carpet. These are this is the name of the class and the way how I like for you to read this is that these are your fields and your attributes which are your size and your carpet and the data type is a room dimension. If you kind of think of the methods down here I have assessors and mutators uh, in the in the methods right here these are all public and each of them, this is your constructor, is your room carpet, which is the same name as your class, which is the same name of your field up here. So this is by default, this is your constructor with this thing. And I'd like for you to come down here and take a look at look at the uh, diamond shape, which means that there's irrigation. Think of this room dimension UML down here is nested inside of this field. So you kind of have this box inside of this box in the attributes with it. And of course I want to point out something. This is what I've written in my book with this thing is that even though you still have your, um, uh, your fields and your length, both of these are private, but your attributes um, are double. Data, data type are doubles with this thing. And your methods in this thing is the getters and the uh, setters with this thing. You still need to get the getters, the get length, and the get width, and returning all that, uh, the getters and the setters in this thing. Okay, so as we go through this, please keep in mind and um, uh, of, of how you want to get the length in this thing with it as well. I'm going to toggle back and forth between this right here. So let's just start with this uh, going back to the thing. So um, what I've done is I have a just a blank notepad basically with this thing and you're welcome to follow along with me and I encourage you to follow along with this thing. The first thing I'm going to start to code is the room dimension uh, class. Uh, if you look at the room dimension class I code this from the 
bottom, outside, and out with the sink. All right. So I'm going to do the room dimension. Is the first thing I'm going to code exactly what this is stating with it as well. So let's look at this room dimension right here. You got your attributes or your fields or your length and your width, which are both are privates, and you have several methods down here that are public. All right. So you would start out with, of course, your three header files with this, your name, uh, my name, I won't put my, you know, your name goes here. Uh, Chorus again, CCC 1437, uh, whatever section that you have. And this is what? This is, uh, I'm just going to call it, this is chapter 6, um, number 3 on page um, 442-443. All right, I want to go ahead and just throw the skeleton up here. We know that we had to call this thing is room dimension, exactly how that is written with it. So inside of this thing, you got to have your public static void main, public static void <clears throat> no, you shouldn't, right? You don't, because I kind of, I kind of went too far with it. Actually, this is a class. You put exactly what the fields are. So uh, where you demo is where you actually. I'm going to put both of these side by side so you can see what I'm about to do. You do not put the um, public side board main because that's where you're going to demo or instantiate the object. Correct. I was going there for a moment. So let's do both of the fields. Both the fields are length and width. They're both privates, right? And the fields is going to be double. And the length with it. So that's the that other field is going to be double. And that's going to be width. Okay, both of these. We need to do the constructor. Remember now. You had me for 1436. I talked about constructor, how you overload a constructor. A constructor can have the same um, the same name with it, but as long as the signature is different, right? So this is your first constructor. It needs to be the same name as your class. So this is going to be public. What's the name of the same? It needs to be what? Room. The same name as your class. Up here, room dimension. So I'm just going to copy that so I'm, I don't have to worry about typos or anything like that. And inside of that, I'm going to pass along two fields, two, two formal argument that I'm going to actually do is lin, short for length, and double for w, let's say. And I'm going to create some curly brackets with this thing inside of that. This, I need to set it, what I'm passing from the right side to equal to the left side is what length. That's going to equal to what field? It's going to equal to this field right here. I'm going to take this width right here, this W right here, and I'm going to set it equal to this feel right here is the width. Okay? So that's how we set the constructor. Now, the rest of these things we need to what? Get the length, get the width, get the area, uh, and most important, of you know, if you recall the two string, right? This two string is is the default to the thing. Uh, it's it's implied, so make sure you understand the true the two string with it as well. All right, so coming down here, uh, just following it along here. So you got that, and we need to get area. Uh, is the next one, right? So let's do the get length and get width in this before we, we forget. So public double get length method. These are getters. And inside of that, oh, why don't I just do this and um, so this is get length. I'm going to do the get width. Okay. Well, this is a getter, so what do I need to return here? So I need to return the field length, correct? Which is this field right here, correct? Which is I'm going to return here. 
and I need, to, I need to return this field. Every time I call the get with, it's going to return that field with it. So I'm going to do return get field with. Okay, so you got both of those things. Now, coming down here. I need to return the get area as well. When I call uh, the get area, this over here, the, the second one, so get area, which is the day type is what? It's a double get area. That is going to, I'm going to return directly with this. Return. Instead of writing another formula, uh, I want you to do just take the feel and multiply it with area. I'm sorry, with. That will return the area. Okay. Here's what not to do. I, I, this is what I'm trying to avoid you guys to do. Not to do is to do this. Don't do this and area, um, and then you, you know, don't don't do this. Again, this is all about memory management. With it, what have you done? You just allocate another eight byte for the area, and then you uh, and then you have to do this. Okay, not to do. Do not do this. So uh, I prefer you to uh, just return the area by taking the length times the width with it. Okay, and do it like that. So every time when you call the get area, uh, it just you know it gives out the two multiply together without allocating any more memories with the same. Let me talk to you about uh, another thing is about um, um, is the two string. Two, the two string, if you recall in your reading, it talks about imply. Uh, every time you call this method, it's going to go directly to the two string to string uh, method and it's going to output directly uh, whatever you, when you pass instantiate the object from the thing. So why don't I just do something like uh, when you call the string method when you instantiate using this room dimension when you instantiate it you're going to do string uh, equal to let's see, length colon and space, concatenate that with uh, the feel length, right? You concatenate that with a little string called with space, let's say, and then you're going to concatenate that with the feel called with, concatenate that with another literal called area, and then you add that uh, concatenate with calling the method called get area. Okay, so something along that line, and of course this is going to get you're going to have return str. Okay, this will return this. But the key thing is when you call when you instantiate this right here, it needs to be um, it's going to go directly to the to string with it. So let's do file save as. Let me just drop this into the the Java. Uh, directory in the bin that I have up here with it. I'm a, what do I call this thing? Well, I need to call this as room dimension is our is our class, right? So I'm going to do exactly what that's called is the room dimension dot Java. Okay. So I'm going to click on making sure my spellings, my names, all properly that matches that has to match the name of my class, and that's what I have right now. And I'm going to leave it there for now. All right. Can't compile that with it. I'm going to go up to this right here, and let me zoom in on this UML right here. So we say that in our in our discussion that it has a diamond. Hold on, let me check something really quick. Uh, 